We will start with the round cup with the foot. It's got a nice round shape to it, a good belly down there at the bottom, a uh, real pronounced foot that gives it some nice height, some shadow, kind of highlights the form. And then a subtle rim gives it a little bit more functionality, a little bit more completion. And I'll show you my sketch in a moment that I started with. Get your clay, you're gonna cut off like fist size or <clears throat> maybe a little less. If it comes straight out of the bag, you don't need to wedge it, but never hurts. It's a good size. Could even be a little smaller. So I'm gonna start with my rounded cup. And the first thing I wanna do is make it into a ball. So any part that sticks out, I whack it. Sticks out, whack it. Until I get a good ball shape. Any little chunks, I can kinda of smooth them down. And roll it around a little bit, if that helps. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Then I'm gonna stick my thumb kind of straight down the middle and I'm going to start doing little tiny pinches tiny 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 pinches pinching and rotating now I can get two thumbs in pinch and rotate and already I'm sort of thinking about the shape I don't want to open it too much so I'm going to kind of push down in there you're gonna want your cup eventually to be about one quarter inch. I have a cup here. Yeah, it's about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit less. This one's got a nice weight to it. It doesn't need to be crazy thin, but it's gonna feel more delicate, comfortable. So looking at that shape. Now it's thicker in here. So I'm gonna push against my palm and rotate evening it out there and it doesn't need to reach its maximum thinness right away you want to avoid getting any thin spots like at this point you might feel it and see you got something that feels a little bit uneven you could take some more clay and just kind of smooth it in any spots that feel like they might be uneven so feel your way around it see how it feels you don't want to set it down there because what's going to happen is over time it's going to start to settle like that. Unless you're going for like a flat bottom cylinder cup, you might start working on it like that. But for my purpose, I want it more rounded at the bottom. So I'm always going to set it down like this. And I want it to have a little more curve here. It's going to come in just a little bit at the top. Yeah, it's going to have more sort of belly down there and it still needs to get a little thinner. So I'm gonna keep working it here, feeling the evenness of the shape. I can get my rib now, it should fit in there. And I can start pushing out some belly down here a little bit. Keep looking at my drawing, maybe I have an image that I keep looking at. You could have your laptop out and look at an image, because when you just approach it not knowing what you're going to make, your shape is going to be less specific, less interesting. Let's see. This top part could thin out. Hmm, but I can't set it on the bottom. What should I do? I know. I can make a little armature for my cup. Try and roll out a nice even coil and I can think about how wide the base of my pot is going to be and it's going to be like it's going to be a bit narrow maybe about there I got my fork score it score it and then put that together and then I can make a nice even shape 
And the shape that I'm making inside of here is the shape that is going to happen here. So it is important if you make a little armature like this that you're thoughtful about what that shape is. This could stick to your piece. If it does, it's not a big deal. But you might want to stick some paper or something in there to allow it to separate easier. Now you could put it on a little board or a book at this point and it could help you rotate it a little bit. Okay, I want to bring that lip in so I'm going to kind of like pinch it, pinch it inward a bit. Look at this shape. Okay, it's too wide here. Let's take a look at my drawing. We can look at it upside down next to the cup. So definitely needs to come in more on the top, out more on the bottom. Using my rib to push that out a little bit. And I can put it back here. Kind of bring, bring that lip in a little bit. It's still kind of wet. So something you might want to do is to leave it sitting out for a little while, maybe an hour or so let it stiffen up and then it'll hold its shape better because right now it's a little bit floppy and it's hard for me to get some subtlety so i'm going to set this one aside you could set it like that back to cup number one looking at the shape could get a little rounder at the bottom and just get a cleaner shape it comes in at the top nicely so i can use my board it's sat for an hour a little more than an hour it's a little stiffer now and you know it really depends on weather is it raining outside is the heater on in your house and as long as it's stiffened up a little bit it's gonna be better than that wet clay but you want it to be not leather hard but here you can see it's still still kind of pliable but a little stiffer and then I can get my metal rib do some kind of smoothing and shaping at the same time. Say you have something that looks like a little crack happening, minor crack, it doesn't really, it's not a big deal at this stage because the clay is still pretty wet. What you'll wanna do is compress it, score it, and you can add a little bit of moisture to it. So say you got your water, a little water, I can get my fork wet. Get some clay that's hopefully at the same moisture level a little coil to kind of fit right in there score it and put it in there you can kind of bend it to get the curve that you want Take this rib, bring that top in a little bit more.
continue shaping. If you have this small rib, that's good. You can keep using your other rib, but I think I want a little more belly down at the bottom. It's the same thing, push and rotate. I'm also removing a little bit of material, getting the walls a little thinner as I do that. Work on the bottom a little bit and rib that. Smooth it with my fingers. And I think I want it to come in, but maybe even have like a little lip to it as it comes in. Good to use this rib for shaping. Could use a spoon or your wooden modeling tool. Want to give it a little bit of a lip. So I can bring back my stand here with paper as I work on the top. Thin out this lip. The lip is very important. The lip talks, and the lip talks about the entire vessel. It says whether it's a nice, light, well-crafted, symmetrical vessel or a clunky, chunky one, and you want that lip to be nice and clean and even. So say we have these issues here where it's starting to split, got dry. It's okay. Compress them, compress them, moisten them. Got a little water. Some clay, preferably stiffer clay that's been sitting out for a little while. Over here, compress it, compress first. That's always the first thing you want to do is compress, score it, a little water, a little bit of clay, that clay that I had sitting out, and then I reshape it. Maybe I'll just cut that whole lip off. Just so it's a little bit taller than I want. And it got a little dry right along there, so we can just come along here and just cut the whole thing carefully. Okay, continue shaping it. That's better. Now we got some fresh clay to mold down there. Okay, I think I got the shape close to how I want it. I think I'm ready to add the foot now. And then I'll flip it over, clean up the top, then maybe I'll trim away a little bit more of the inside just to make it a little lighter just do a little bit of trimming on it and I got the clay that's been sitting out so it's stiffened up a bit so it can support the weight of the cup I'm gonna roll a coil 
as evenly as you can. You want to add the foot close to the end. Your shape should not be changing much at this point. Yeah, I think that's about how I want it. And I'll do my special cutting trick to make sure that it lines up real nice right there. And then I can score the bottom where I want it to go. And you really want to reactivate that clay here. So my water dipping my, my fork or my scoring tool in the water Look at how it really reactivates and gets nice and wet. What you may need to do if this is dried out too much is you can take a paper towel, piece of paper, dip it in the water, dip it in the water, get it real wet, and you can stick it right in that spot where you want it to re-moisten here like this. Dip it in the water so it's real wet. And then you would put that right on the top. I don't want to get this wet, but you would put it right where you want it to re-moisten. That's a great trick, whether it's the rim, the bottom, whatever. But when you're attaching things, you really got to make sure that you get them wet. I'm not going to add too much water to this because it's so small. It'll really get soggy if I put too much water on it and it needs to support the weight of the cup so I got to be careful not to add too much and I'll carefully start squishing that on you do want to make sure it's pretty level and looks like maybe it needs to tilt a little bit a little bit this way That's pretty good. And then do the inside. create a little bit of a line here where the glaze will stop not absolutely necessary but it does really kind of help with glazing You can check your wall thickness with your needle tool by poking it through and you feel the other end. It's good. A little more than the quarter inch. So maybe that'll thin that a little bit, but it's not too bad. Check it down here. Oh, it's pretty similar, but a little thinner. So that's good. We're relatively consistent, but we want to get it a little thinner. So I know it's a little thicker than I want right around here so I can get my large trimming tool and really carefully start scooping out a little bit of clay. It's better to do this at kind of a stiff, stiffer stage, kind of on the moister side of leather hard. So maybe if it's a little more leather hard, it's ideal. And then let's thin out this top edge a little bit. Got a little thick around the lip 
because it's been sitting on that lip and kind of compressing. So it's definitely thicker there than it is everywhere else. that rim a little more so if you poked a hole to check the thickness you just smooth it right out and it should be fine last thing you want to do is get some water got your sponge dip it in the water squeeze out excess water and then you want to work that lip with the sponge a lot like you would on the wheel and just sponging rotating soft lip no real angles on it so at this point you could do some more smoothing with the sponge all around careful not to get it too wet and if you overwork it with the sponge you start to kind of bring out the grog in the clay it's a little sandy not the worst thing but as you sponge it you're removing the soft fine particles of clay and what's left is going to be the grog or the sand those bigger particles in the clay popsicle st stick tool where you cut the end cut the end sand it down sand it down you could just rub it on the concrete to sand it that works fine rub it on concrete and it gives you a nice edge here you can use that to clean up the bottom just clean up the lip a little bit there and just continue that concave edge of the lip and I think that's about done and then on the bottom, you want to take a dull pencil and sign it with your initials or something. And then you can put a number on here. Then wrap that up, and we can do some texture on it next week. Keep it moist. Or if you're like, I just worked really hard on that, I don't want to ruin it, then you could, you could leave it to dry out. But I really recommend wrapping it up so that you can try out some texture, try some fluting or some faceting or something like that on there to kind of jazz it up a little more.